this morning comes from St. John, the 15th and 16th chapters. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. But I have said these things to you so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do, do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer. About judgment. Because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them right now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said to you, he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. Yesterday, a friend of mine posted on Facebook about how upset she was seeing all these horrific things that are going on that others were sharing. She had hit that point, you know, as we all do, of being overwhelmed by the horrible things that were going on, and she didn't want to be saturated in them as she drank her morning coffee. A familiar feeling, perhaps, at times. In the midst of this, I came across a story about a six-year-old kid named Glenn. Glenn has mild autism and epilepsy. His mother, loving him dearly, threw him a birthday party and invited his entire class of 16 kids. Some of you may have also come across this story. But when time came for the party, not a single kid showed up. Glenn's mother was devastated. She ached for her child and was enraged at the thoughtlessness of those who refused to come to the invitation. There, there are experiences we come across or witness that require those Holy Spirit groans, sighs too deep for words that were mentioned in our second reading, experiences that just cannot be articulated in words only felt. And we feel them. It is into these that the Holy Spirit steps, acknowledging the present realities while working toward a new reality. The story about Glenn continued. After Glenn's mom posted a note on Facebook about her frustration, 15 children from the area and their parents turned up. Firefighters and police officers from the community came bearing gifts. The county sheriff's office even flew a helicopter low enough over Glenn's party that the pilot was able to wave at Glenn. Acknowledging the present reality while looking forward to a future hope. There will be a day when six-year-old boys will cease having birthday parties that no one shows up at. When prejudices and bullying cease, there will. And for now, we are not stranded to ache on our own. We are here together, called by God and equipped by the Holy Spirit to hear and to respond, to see and to act in love toward our neighbor. The six-year-old boy, now ignored by classmates, the 35-year-old new wife shunned by her stepdaughter, the 82-year-old new 
widow who doesn't know what to do with her Tuesday nights anymore. The list is endless, but it is not hopeless. On the day of Pentecost, after Christ had risen from the dead, the disciples and countless others were gathered, representatives of every known nationality and language at that time, stood together, and through the Holy Spirit were equipped to understand and to speak to each other in ways they couldn't before. Suddenly, they were equipped to reach out to one another and share the story of the gospel and serve their neighbors in new and beautiful ways because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And whether or not the Holy Spirit gifts someone today with the ability to speak or understand another language, the Holy Spirit no less equips us to be present with our neighbor, to reach out to help and serve, equips us to see those instances of brokenness or groaning or sighs too deep for words, and to reach out. When Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, the current understanding of sin, righteousness, and judgment was proven to be wrong. Righteousness, because the one thought to be against the religious body of the time, was shown to be right with God and welcomed into God's presence. Judgment, because the one casting judgment was shown to have gotten it wholly wrong when condemning Jesus. Scapegoating was proven to be wrong. Letting someone who is not guilty bear the fault of others was proven to be a broken practice, as God redeemed the one who suffered unjustly. Killing, judging, tearing apart, condemning, wielding swords, or going on crusades were proven to fall short. But rather, of offering freedom and forgiveness to those pushed away, loving and showing kindness to those overlooked, going out of your way to serve someone else. This is what is revealed as rightness. This is how Christ shows us to live lives of service to God, by living lives of love toward our neighbor, those near and far. This is your call, graduates, whether you remain here or spread far and wide. This is the call of each one of us. It doesn't matter if you are moving into a new dorm room this fall or if the only moving that you've done in the past 50 years is move from your childhood bedroom to the master bedroom in the same home or from the farmhouse to the townhouse. We all see people throughout the week and each person we run into is beloved by God and can bear hearing it again. Each person has experienced some sort of pain, agony, discomfort, or confusion that warrants needing a reminder. You know how we know it. Because we need reminding. None of us gets it 100% right 100% of the time, and it never hurts to hear it again. John writes, you also are to testify because you witness things in your life that are the working of the Spirit as your eyes open to see them. The Spirit is one of wholeness, life-giving, empowering, unifying. So when you witness these things, you witness the Spirit at work. When individuals and communities choose to live in unity despite differences rather than greed and animosity, this is is the work of the Holy Spirit and our openness to it. When you witness Jesus Christ being proclaimed and heard, you witness the Spirit at work. And we can all use a little reminding that the Holy Spirit is at work in your life. Because some want to explain it away, belittle God's presence, like the story in Acts, oh, they are only drunk. That is why their speech sounds funny. That is why they are talking differently. As if a little wine at nine in the morning can give someone the ability to hear and understand other languages and communicate well with others. We are called to testify, to call it as it is, even when it seems silly to others. The world is saturated with God's presence. We are called to bring attention to it, to point it out and say, hey, you know what? I think God is up to something here. Why am I doing this? Why am I taking time out of my day to go and spend time with a student in confirmation? Because investing in the faith life in youth matters. Why am I being intentional about welcoming this person? Because God cares about her and loves her deeply, and I believe that matters. And 
now you're going to care about her too. Why am I going to refrain from gossip? Because living in harmony is hard enough as it is. And we don't need to make it more difficult by toxic words. How about we talk about the good things we've witnessed instead? Because each day, the Holy Spirit is present and active and offering comfort, peace, unity, strength, courage, and endurance to get through what you didn't think you could. The Holy Spirit is present with groans too deep for words when words are insufficient to express the depth of agony you are feeling. The Holy Spirit is present in the community that gathered to wish Glenn a happy birthday and assure him and his mother that this child is loved and is not alone. <coughs> you graduates are in a time of transition, as are we all. We all are in a time of transition each day as we are called by God to more fully live into the lives that God calls us to, the lives the Holy Spirit equips us for and inspires and energizes us to carry out. The lives modeled and enabled through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, who shows, up, who shows us just what it may cost. But more than that, what we gain through his sacrifice. And so each day we live into our response to, lives live, to live lives of service, lives of humble obedience to God's call, lives of bold truth declaring, and lives of leaving judgment in the hands of God, and lives of radical love toward our neighbors near and far, those lovable and those difficult to love, just as we are called, equipped, and sent by the Holy Spirit to do so. The Holy Spirit is with you now and at all times.